guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of all zodiac signs for the second full moon in Capricorn. Uh, the moon will be at its peak at 6.17 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday, July 21st. So that's like 11.17 a.m. in London, 3.17 a.m. in L.A. So um, check your local listings. But it is the second full moon in Capricorn in a row. So what I'm going to do is pull here from Moonology Oracle to get the reading started. Then I'm going to give you some details about this lunation. And there's a lot. So this is time stamped for your convenience if you're not interested in the details about um, the full moon. And then there will be a tower reading. So let me go ahead and pull from Moonology. Let's see what messages come through. Hope this finds you all well. The moon has already been in Capricorn because the full moon will be at its peak at 29 degrees. So it's sort of going to move really quick. Um, but we've been building to this energy. I, I'm sure you've been feeling it. I know I have. <sighs> Don't let pride get in your way. End of a tough cycle. Full moon in Capricorn. There you go. Yes, the pride thing is interesting and the answers you need are coming. Okay, so for the cards that I've selected, all three of them are full moon energies. The first is the full moon in Leo. Don't let pride get in your way. So this full moon, there is a conjunction with um, Pluto. So it's going to be a stressful full moon. Full moons are already emotional. This one is going to be that like uh, to the nth degree. And, and there will be some uncomfortable truths that we may each need to face. And sometimes our pride, you know, rears its ugly head. So that's just a good little um, piece of advice. Don't let pride get in your way. But do know that the end of a very tough cycle is approaching. And then following that, we have the full moon in Gemini's message to you is the answers you need are coming. Okay, so um, really lovely messages, all full moon messages. I'm going to put the full moon in Capricorn front and center because that's where we're at. All right, so before I jump into tarot, let's go into my notes about our full moon. So I want to kind of go back to the basics. And this is really important, and this little part will serve you for all full moons. During a full moon, the light of the sun will fully illuminate the moon. And what that does is it allows us to gain some awareness of something that is usually unconscious and hidden from our sight, right? Hidden from our conscious awareness. And at this time of the month, every month when we have a full moon, we have this opportunity to see something we could not see before. We can see ourselves in a new light, uh, see our reality more clearly, see a situation, you know, more uh, clearly. Emotions are heightened when the moon is full because that which is unresolved comes to the surface to be released and cleared uh, throughout the second half of the lunar cycle while the momentum sort of decreases and the moon gets smaller and wanes, right? Um, so that's the process. This second Capricorn full moon in a row uh, once again brings a spotlight on the Cancer Capricorn polarity. Capricorn and Cancer are across from each other on um, the zodiac chart. And that is like the family axis is, uh, is the Cancerian to the Capricornian right? Fourth house to the 10th house. And that's linked with our journey of maturation. It's our maturing process, the journey of becoming an emotional adult and the journey of becoming self-responsible. We start at Aries, we move to Taurus, then Gemini. When we hit Cancer, we're in the family dynamic. And that's where we, you know, kind of learn our lessons, we get some structure, we have a little nurturing if we're lucky enough. And by the time we move around the zodiac and get to the 10th house, opposite the fourth, 
were supposed to be a full-fledged self-actual self-actualized adult that now then goes out in the world and can be self-responsible. That's how that works. So this Capricorn full moon represents the completion of a chapter of our maturation journey. And because of the tight connection between this moon and Pluto, as I mentioned just a moment ago, is likely to reveal to us something about ourselves we were unaware of that is likely to be uncomfortable to see. I'm already seeing some of it, so I, I get emotional just talking about it. And this event offers us chances to access a deeper understanding of the purpose of what happened in the past weeks and months, right? And encourages us to make changes that are perhaps long overdue. So this one's gonna pack a punch, guys. Uh, it's gonna illuminate some shit. Um, whether you choose to look at it, obviously, is up to you. Um, but I don't think even a pillow over the head is gonna help anyone. So the second full moon uh, in Capricorn in 2024 happens to be occurring on the last degree of the sign of Capricorn. The 29th degree of any sign is technically called the anoretic, A-N-A-R-E-T-I-C degree. It's called the mastery degree. It's a powerful point of the zodiac wheel in any sign. And when this point is activated by a transit or, or an event like a full moon, it indicates that we're about to complete a learning process, right? Here's your diploma. It's kind of the thought. Um, and it's part of the learning process and an evolutionary journey that we get to say, okay, I'm good to go. And now I can begin the next leg of the journey, right? In, in, in a new, in new territory. So it marks a time when issues often reach their breaking point, especially if we haven't sort of grokked what we were supposed to learn. Um, and things tend to become more extreme, right? Remember going from high school to college for those of you that did, or from like, you know, hourly wage positions to salaried, or from your, you know, your home to a marriage, right? Your home with your family to a marriage. Think of those shifts, whatever they were for you, you can think back for, I'm giving you the examples from, you know, general population, but you can find in your own life that point where there was a, a big leap and it brings tension and things get very extreme. And then we have this moon at that degree, very tightly conjunct Pluto, which is retrograde. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so it brings to completion a journey of psychological and emotional transformation. And this event shines a light into the shadows and offers us opportunities to gain awareness of what attachments have to be released. Remember, this is the family leave the home and become a self-sufficient adult axis. So whatever attachments we have that have to be released and what needs to drastically shift in order for us to mature even if we're all grown up. So Pluto, as you have heard me say a thousand times, is the Lord of the underworld, um, you know, the planet of transformation, um, sometimes the great destroyer. And the current astrological configuration here highlights uh, the need for of structurally transforming both our inner and our outer reality. Fourth house is our inner world, right? What happens behind closed doors in the family? Tenth house, our outer world, right? Our jobs, our, our work life, our persona, our public life. So, um, and then we have to take that transformation and allow what has run its course to die off and release our reliance on old coping strategies and old ways of being. I know, I just told you, 
This, and I told you at the last full moon in Capricorn that this one was going to be a doozy. So here we are. Um, so unprocessed psychological and emotional pain is likely to come out up around this time. I have seen it in some of your comments. So I know that this has been a real bumpy time for many of you. Um, and, you know, it's going to ask for our full presence and to be felt without judgment and to be experienced with compassion. Be gentle with yourself is the memo here. Um, we have an opportunity to also become aware of our defense mechanisms and how we avoid feeling the feels um, and all of our little manipulative strategies that we employ to have our needs met without having to be vulnerable. Mm -mm, not going to work this time. That shit has to go. So this full moon conjunct Pluto allows us to see the deeper evolutionary intentions and lessons behind the repetitive cycles and patterns we continuously get caught in and invites us to recognize what needs to change within ourselves in order to have different and hopefully better experiences. So my loves, that is the full moon in Capricorn Redux. How about we do some tarot? <laughs> After all that, I know. I mean, for some of you, this whole thing is not going to even, like, you know, for some of you, it's not an issue. Um, and that's fine. So take your crystals out and put them under the full moon and charge them and cleanse them and do some saging and you'll be, you'll be good. And for others of us, you know, just send us a lot of love because we're going to need it. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll see you on the flip side. <sighs> Here we go. Seven of Pentacles. So the present energy and, you know, the overall energy here with the Seven of Pentacles is about, okay, this is a work in progress and things evolve over time. So we need to be a little patient. Seeds of intention have been planted. What's the challenge here? Queen of Wands. But I want it and I want it now. <laughs> so perfect. So there's some, um, maybe some impatience. Uh, is the problem. Page of Cups in our unconscious awareness. Uh, maybe a need for some communication from the heart or words that seem supportive, sensitive, and sincere. Nine of Wands in the past, something that we've been persevering through. It's been tough. It's been a struggle and probably somewhat exhausting, but, you know, it's, it's perseverance. In our conscious awareness, Eight of Pentacles. Okay, something I might need a little tweaking. The Eight of Pentacles is about, you know, creative solutions to the to a problem. I love in this deck that she's actually sitting at uh, like a crafts table. She's got all her art supplies. I love the metaphor of creative solutions to a problem and um, working through it. Putting your focused attention on, on the details here. So something to be worked through, ooh, and then released. Yes, death and rebirth comes through in the near future. This is ruled, this death card is associated with Scorpio, but Pluto rules Scorpio. So this is what needs to be released so the transformation can occur. Perfect. All right, guys. So while my clothing... <laughs> adjustments occur. Let's jump in and get some details. My Lord. Knight of Cups, the Fool. Yeah, I feel like this is someone you're dealing with who um, maybe has been a little bit off the grid, maybe unapproachable. You've been patient. Um, maybe this is someone who... Um, You're just waiting for them to take the leap for love. You really are. I do feel uh, the Queen of Wands coming in with some, a uh, little bit of frustration, um, right? It's hard to be patient. 
and it's hard to kind of sit there in anticipation of something when you're a mover and a shaker and you know what you feel and and things are taking a long time but i do feel like you're dealing with somebody who isn't real approachable or they're off the grid somehow and there is some waiting on them to kind of you know take that leap to just do it it isn't that you don't believe that they have feelings it's that they're not acting on them page of cups in your unconscious awareness page of cups page of wands love and passion there's the world card which is saturn those strength card overcoming the obstacles helping this person overcome some obstacles too it could be that this is like where you're helping each other and the, the world card is closing out a cycle the, the repeated patterns cycles a difficult cycle and starting fresh so love and passion as i say when i see the cups and the wands together in the court cards i often feel that that's the message and so we're starting kind of basic we're starting back at square one i feel you're optimistic um you're in consideration of let's begin again fresh start new beginning uh but it's taking time and and you don't i i feel like you can't really reach this person they're gonna have to come to you and that's the frustration nine of wands right exhausting perseverance is needed page of pentacles all the pages today guys knight of swords six of pentacles the truth of the situation is you probably um let this person know that you expect some reciprocity that you expect some give and take and you know like just baby steps here baby steps but that you're really not wanting to be breadcrumbed there's a difference if somebody's taking things one step at a time, that's one thing. As long as you feel that there's an effort being made, that's part of the message of the Eight of Pentacles as well, is an effort. Um, but if you feel that you're being breadcrumbed, that wouldn't fly. And that may have been articulated. And it's just something that you've, you know, you've kind of been pushing through. And maybe it's been an exhausting experience. I don't think you have given up yet but it's it's definitely feeling a little stressful eight of pentacles in your conscious awareness well there's the the compassion there's pluto here um wheel of fortune jupiter queen of cups your open heart judgment forgiveness second chances redemption this is something that you feel that it's the time is now to work through it right that's why it's difficult to kind of just sit there and wait even though that's the message part of the message of the wheel of fortune is divine timing but it seems to me that you're starting to feel that the time is passing um, meaning like if we wait too long, it'll be too little too late. So although your heart is open and I see your, your focus, your attention on this and wanting to kind of be a force for, uh, for seeing the opportunities for where you can work on things and make some adjustments as they may be needed, there is a timing element here that you're struggling with and what i would want to say is you're you're you might need to release that in this full moon that may be part of the thing is to release control over the outcomes or the timing of the outcomes let's see death and rebirth in the near future seven of cups five of wands page of cups so things may reach a fever pitch um, in the near future i do see 
this moment of, you know, is this something that just has to be released? The confusion, the emotional overwhelm, the conflict, the tension, the chaos, it just, it's just going to feel like I described in my reading of the energies of this lunation is it might have us all feeling like we're all over the map emotionally. And that's what I'm seeing here. You know, do I just have to let it go entirely? Or is there an opportunity for us to salvage this and come through it with some form of trans, you know, some kind of transformation? And look what we have, the little page of cups. So I do feel that this behind the scenes, this person sort of comes in at the last minute with some sort of message that lets you know, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about this or my bad or, you know, whatever the message is, it's sincere. Like, don't mean to make it this complicated. Um, and that may be enough to just calm the tensions, to calm the nerves, to calm the emotions. So I don't think I'm seeing anything final. I'm seeing drama, though. That was already pretty much determined based on what I shared with you about this moon. So just know that that can be expected, but it's part of the process of the release. And then once we get it out of the way, if what you're really wanting is a reset and, you know, let's begin again and clear this cycle, that may be exactly where you're headed. So uh, I'm going to give you the astrology that shows up here. As always, I'm going to take it to the extended and go into each individual zodiac sign. Those are very mini readings. So each sign gets its own card. And then I go all the way around, tell you what I think I see. Then I go back in and do a little um, clarification. So it's mini spreads. So the link to that is below, and if you want a deeper dive, and it's good for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, for you, for your divine counterpart, that is available to you. If you have any of the memberships, individual Zodiac sign memberships, or the All Access Pass, you already have that extended in your collection. So just wanted you to know that. Um, if you've enjoyed this reading and you haven't already, please join us here by subscribing. And once you've, you know, the only way I can grow the channel or even stay here and continue bringing this content to you is if people subscribe, if people view, that's the only way that YouTube's going to say, oh, she's serious about this and put my readings and videos in front of new viewers. So then you can click notifications and you won't miss another reading. So that is my ask, but here we go with the astrology. The Queen of Wands is associated with the sign of Aries, Knight of Cups, Pisces. The Fool is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius, Virgo in the Hermit. We have the Page of Cups, not once, but twice, which is the water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Page of Wands, the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The world card is Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. We have um, strength card is Leo, Page of Pentacles, the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Knight of Swords is Gemini. The Wheel of Fortune, Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius. Queen of Cups is Cancerian energy. Judgment is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. The Death card is Scorpio. So you see the themes here. And then, oh, and the Page of Cups again. So that's what we've got. Yeah, don't let pride get in the way because it's going to get dicey. The end of a tough cycle, yes, indeed, is approaching. And the answers you need are coming, and they may come in the form of a very sweet and sincere message from the heart. So that's what I have for you. The link to the extended is below, and I'm heading there now. Bye.